All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, I need... Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the... car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this! <laughs> what did I tell you? 88 miles per hour! The temporal displacement occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Ow! Doc, what would happen to the car? Calm down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. And at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Kind of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal. Look out! Uh. Doc? Oh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, wh what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuit. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Notebook, notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic! Doc? Great Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake! Doc! No! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Marty? Is everything okay? Yeah, Mom. I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. 
But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late. Too late to stop the... sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and... Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know... Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by, before Biff grabs them all. It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty! Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... ...remembering. Doc built this model of downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Come on, I saw it first. Yeah, I guess you're right. But I picked it up first. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Brown's to... worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. Ha! Ah! It's just a notebook with Doc's scribblings. What did Doc ever accomplish? Nothing. And then it's worthless, right? If it was really worthless, you wouldn't want it so bad. I only want that notebook because... Well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead! Time to get over it and move on! I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. Hey, Dad. Wh why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. Ah, 
Doc, where are you? Come from, boy. Didn't you bring Doc with you? <laughs> Looks like the time circuits still work. Now I only need to know when to look for Doc. Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I program the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you come to my rescue in the past. Oh, was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Aren't you gonna tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading mark, Last Time Departed. Good luck. Right, right, Last Time Departed, Last Time Departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on, come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? What do you know about this, Shuiny? Great Scott! I think he's onto something! Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to Doc, Aini? Look at you. Einstein, come on! Just as I suspected. Hooligan! State your business, child! You're making me miss Merv! Well, see, that's the thing. I'm not sure why I'm here. Einstein here brought me, and... Well? I'm not a hooligan, ma'am. I'm a, a teenager. I wasn't born yesterday, young man. Aren't you the miscreant who skateboards through the town square every morning between 8 and 8.30 in a decidedly unpunctual manner? Uh, yeah? All skateboarders are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. E. Strickland? You aren't related to, uh, Vice Principal Strickland, are you, ma'am? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm his sister, Edna. Oh, and you're one of those McFly slackers, aren't ya? Yes, uh, what's old man Strick? I mean, what else has your brother been saying about me? Nothing I couldn't have deduced for myself, slacker. Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. A shoe? Wow, now what would I want with a... Huh? <gasps> Stay there! Leave that creature outside! Sorry, Einstein. Hmm. 
Well, took you long enough. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Mm, much better. So neat and orderly. Nah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Uh... Have a seat, Sonny. You kids! Put out those cigarettes! Don't touch those! My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! Yes? Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Huh. Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But... Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh... Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes. The day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. <laughs> Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a student of history. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny! Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe figs about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Doing some stargazing? No, oh, I set my sights on <laughs> lower things. Is that... Tip Tannen! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! Don't let me keep you from your business. You there! Don't even think about tossing that Kleenex on the ground! That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. And don't touch anything!
juveniles collide with manure truck. <laughs> nice picture. Brown mansion destroyed. 1962. No, no, that's not where Doc's stranded. All right, Einstein brought me this shoe, and Miss Strickland lost the shoe on the day the speakeasy burned down. Let's see. Ground broken on sight of former speakeasy, singer vanishes, Hill Valley Expo delights crowd, soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let no! me... No! You've gotten my history out of order! Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Help! Police! I'm being attacked by hooligans! Marty! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? Uh, didn't I tell you? I, I got the lead in the school play. Uh, we're doing... Grapes of Wrath? Right! Oh, Steinbeck! Who are you playing? Um, uh... Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. You ready to go, Einstein? Time circuits? Ah, flux capacitor. Uh, fluxy. Okay, if Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before. And get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Einstein, where'd you go now, boy?
Young man? Excuse me, young man? Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? How'd Doc get himself into... Doc? Doc is his nickname. I'm good friends with Carl. You are? Really? Oh, but I need an unbiased opinion for my story. Pretend you don't know him. How would you feel about his heroic act of destruction? There's gotta be some sort of mistake here. Doc, I mean, uh, uh, Carl, wouldn't do something like that. It's surprising the lengths a person will go to when it's a clear-cut matter of right and wrong. You've got an honest look about you. You do support the side of righteousness, I trust. Well, I'm not so big on bomb blasts. Yes, but this bomb blasted a speakeasy, the very symbol of lawlessness and corruption. You're all for cleaning up the town, aren't you? Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets? No doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? No, no not really. That's the spirit! Destroy them with indifference! If we refuse to patronize their establishments and glorify their wicked exploits, they'll soon be exposed for the pathetic wretches they are! May I get your name? Michael Corleone. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Corleone. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before! What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up! Doc. I gotta find Doc. Who are you and what do you want? Can I talk to, uh, Carl Sagan? Are you his lawyer? Um... No. Then scram. Doc. <gasps> Marty. Doc. What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system. Of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Great right, Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Why don't we tell the authorities? Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow? They'd ship us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided, do you? Why don't we try to tough it out? Now that we know what's coming, maybe we sneak it past the gangsters with a bulletproof vest or something. That might work with one or two bullets, but from the looks of this article, it appears that I'm going to be mowed down in a hail of atomic gunfire that rendered the innocent stranger little more than a puffy mass of bones and gristle. Who writes like that? According to the byline, one Edna Strickland. I should have guessed. Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc. You're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. 
Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me! 1931 me! Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed to- Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. McFly? Biff? Kid! Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly! The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it! If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid, I'll just... Run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Aw. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Brown result. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Don't touch those! These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? Or from the patent office? I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket-powered drill? 
Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Now nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel! I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol! And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. I've got a subpoena my grandpa. No! <gasps> it's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. What the hell, Matches? You, you got Kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here! How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? I guess you won't talk about your business. Why not? I got nothing to hide. I recently acquired controlling interest in the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. Isn't the soup kitchen an odd line of business for a guy like you? I like soup. Plus, I got a heart as big as all outdoors. Uh, buff a little harder. I want to see myself in the toes. I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! What'd you do? Give me that hat, you lousy crook! Damn it! a monkey out of Kid Tannen! Ow! Fix me up! Where'd you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out! Hey, honey. Come here for a sec, boy. Hey, boy. Can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? Where is he going? Only one way to find out. Huh. Deja vu. Ah. Arthur McFly? Yeah? Got something for you. Thanks. A subpoena? Ordering you to appear in court and provide evidence in the investigation into- Kid Tannen? Take it back! You can't get rid of it, Mr. McFly. Once you've been served, it's your duty to report to the court at the earliest possible time. Failure to do so could lead to a warrant for your arrest. Arrest? But kid'll kill me. Stupid, stupid Artie. Holy cats, what am I gonna do? I suggest you avail yourself to the protection of the court. Oh gosh, oh gosh.
Oh, I hate doing stuff like that. But I won't have too much longer. No? Once we get that 190 proof alcohol and build my rocket drill, my future will be set and I'll be able to quit this crummy job. Oh, right. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. What's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup delivery. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls. Or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh? The Brown Residence. You mean Judge Brown's place? Yeah, I happen to be good friends with his son Emmett, and he's told me the judge would love to lend his place out for, you know, good causes like yours. Really? Why, that's the most generous, public-spirited offer I've received in a month of Sundays! Please, tell your friend Emmett we accept. If you'll just fix it so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold your horses, let's not get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But, if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. I got a book. Oh? A cue ball. What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of, uh, soup. Soup soup? Well, uh, this is the regular soup, and this is the special soup. Right. Special. Hey, what are you doing? I'm spicing up the soup. It's my secret recipe. Listen, this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right, just try the soup. Well? Ah, I can see why you want to keep this a secret. Bowl of soup. We're a soup kitchen. What do you think? Uh, what kind of soup is this? It, it tastes like scroll a ribolita. I was gonna say weak old cabbage. Everyone's a critic. Look. All I got to work with is this two-bit soup in a barrel and spice rack that hadn't been restocked since the Coolidge administration. What do you think I should do to perk this slop up? Let's see. Have you tried... salt? Salt? What do you think, it's too bland? Too mild? I didn't put too much pepper in it, did I? I just think it could use a little more salt. No accounting for taste these days. I, 
Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. I'm afraid I haven't much time. The meeting of the Stay Sober Society is, is due to begin very soon. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit from my soup cycle? The Stay Sober Society. That's right. They'll soon be gathering at the Brown Estate, and we haven't provided refreshments. I can't get over the generosity of your friend Emmett volunteering his father's house for our meeting. Huh? Oh, wait there! Michael! What in the name of Thomas Alva Edison do you think you're doing? Don't you get it? You need alcohol to run your drill, right? Those bootleggers at the soup kitchen won't let us get our hands on any of their hooch. But we can get Miss Strickland to pick it up for us and deliver it right to your door. No! Out of the question! Why? I can't just let strangers invade my parents' house. What do we know about these people? They're sober. It says so right in the name. Well... Okay, but a pop needs his peace and quiet at the end of the day. This meeting is sure to be too noisy. I'll be quiet. You'll be quiet, right? Oh, yes! I play my tambourine very softly. You hear that? Yes, but... But what? But it's still impossible. Okay, forget the whole thing. We don't have to test your rocket power drill tonight. We don't? No. I'll take the train back to Washington and I'll tell the folks at the office to give the patent to Dr. McCoy. Wait! You will instruct the members of the society to wipe their feet before they come inside. Then you are, Emmett Brown. I thought as much. You have such a righteous face. Edna Strickland, I don't know how to thank you for your generosity. Oh, um, uh, pleased to meet you. The feeling is mutual. I've got a bad feeling about this. All right, Edna, just think of all those poor unfortunates and hold your nose. Mr. Donnelly! Well, we've served the subpoena and gotten a barrel of booze delivered to your house. Looks like we're off to your lab to build your rocket drill. Uh, you do have a lab, right? What kind of future patent holder would I be without a lab? Come on! Doc! I'm off to get the rocket drill. Good! <gasps> Come on, let's go! Time waits for no man! Are you sure this is gonna work? Emmett? Don't let the ramshackle nature of my laboratory fool you. If all goes according to plan, we'll soon be in possession of the most powerful rocket fuel known to man. That's great. Uh, how? Well, it's very simple. This crankshaft induces a powerful direct current into the electrolysis chamber, producing hydrogen, which must be periodically released into the primary distillation barrel. While tending to the hydrogen, we'll also need to regularly sprinkle these shredded protein flakes into this aquarium of tuber bacteria to generate the necessary nitrogen to catalyze the reaction! Cool. No, oh, hot! Extremely hot! The temperature of the reaction must be kept at a steady temperature of 623 degrees Kelvin by carefully pumping these bellows! Any questions? Oh, what? Eureka! Now all we gotta do is fuel up the old rocket power drill and you and, and I can- I can take it and go. But don't you want to test it first? No time. The, uh, the, the last train for DC leaves in just a few minutes. All right. You've got to get this baby to the U.S. Patent Office. I, I can't. Huh? Emmett, I I'm not from the Patent Office. I don't understand. I, I, I lied to you. 
But I, I didn't want to. It was just, it was the only way I can get you to trust me. See, there's somebody who's in big trouble. Someone very important to me, to, to both of us. I, I can't tell you who, but I need to save him tonight. And, and I need your invention to do it. I'll get it back to you, I, I promise. And, Emmett, you're gonna be a great inventor. Wait! Keep the throttle at about eight. Okay, Doc, I got the drill. Now let's get you out of here. Come on, start! supposed to be Doc! They're moving him to another facility for safekeeping. Oh, I better go get a quote from the police chief. Paddy wagon intercepted, suspect slain, and they're still after him. How am I going to rescue him now? Hmm. At least the rocket part came out of this in one piece. Thanks, Doc. 
I guess that's why they call you the street. How did you know that? I have my sources. Stand back, Doc! Son of a bitch! Oh, oh, oh. This is a rush too! Uh, that's the idea! Ah. Oh. Why couldn't your younger self have built us a hoverboard? They both be invented for another 84 years! Got any ideas? Nothing! But none of them are applicable to this situation! So what do we do now? I was hoping you knew! That's the throttle! I oh. Fine. But I wonder what sorts of bizarre repercussions my younger self's invention of a flying bicycle will have on the timeline. Did you know that would happen? I had a suspicion. I never could keep those rockets from exploding. So, what do we do now? Now we get back to 1986 before our interactions with the past inevitably cascade into a calamitous future. Where'd you leave Einstein? Uh, Doc? He's not in the pound, is he? No, uh, but I think we've got bigger problems right now. Great Scott! What's happening? I don't know. You'll have to be careful not to run into ourselves. Hey, fellas. All right, McFly. Let's go see the... What's happening? I don't know. Unless... Uh, tomorrow's newspaper. Do you still have it? Yeah. Local accountant beaten. Left for dead. Local accountant Arthur McFly was severely beaten and left for dead on the steps of the Hill Valley Courthouse last night. They're gonna kill my grandpa? Tannen's goons, no doubt. Probably in retaliation for Arthur answering that subpoena you delivered. What are we gonna do? I'm not sure what we can do. According to this, your grandfather was dumped on the doorsteps of the courthouse five minutes ago. My dad's picture is disappearing. That's a time stream catching up with your grandfather's fatal wounds. Which means your father will never be born, and neither will you, unless... <laughs> when did you last see your grandfather? Four o'clock, in the town square. Let's give him enough time to make his deposition. Right. We'll have to be careful not to run into ourselves. That shouldn't be a problem in your case. I mean, you were in jail. All right, let's get moving before the police find us. Freeze! Ah. Step out of the car with your hands up. What was that? 
What was what? Crap! I heard something back there. I think you're mistaken, officer. Grandfather, I'll be fine until you get back. You got it, Doc. What was that? Four fifty five. Artie's got to be in there somewhere, spilling his guts to the DA. There he is. All I gotta do is get to him before... Mr. Corleone! I was wondering if I could do a little follow-up interview with you about the plight of poor Mr. Sagan. My sources indicate that Judge Brown will be setting him free tomorrow. I wouldn't bet on that. What's that? Nothing. Listen, can we talk later? I've really gotta get to the courthouse right now. Really? Why? My grandpa he needs me as a character witness to get a fishing license. Well then, carry on. And do put that vicious dog of yours on a leash, will you? We have laws about that sort of thing, you know. Sure, no problem. Ah! ah! Oh, come on, yesterday, Marty. Stop talking and get moving. Einstein? Einstein, what is it? Go away, boy! Crap! Einstein! Is it a squirrel, Einie? I haven't got time for this, Einie. Get her, Einie. You! Oh, get this mangy animal away from me! Oh, come on, Einstein, and get away from the nice lady. My shoes! Einstein, no! no. Way to go, Einie. Now, to get into that courthouse and grab Artie before Tannen's guys. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Hey! Oh, God. Um, hey! According to my calculations, the rotary engine for a full-scale rocket drill requires 1.21 kilowatts of power. Can you check over my work to make sure? Are you alright? Yeah. Yeah. But I need to get to Arthur. Why? He might be headed for an accident. Arthur McFly may not be the most coordinated fellow around, but I'm sure he can walk up a flight of stairs. Come on. Shouldn't we be getting on with our work? We're on a strict deadline, right? Sure, but Arthur's on an even deader deadline. Why are you so suddenly concerned about Arthur? Oh, hell. Oh, my God, what the hell is that? What's what? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. No, I, I mean before, while I was walking towards you. I wasn't talking to anyone. I was working on equations for my rocket drill. No, I mean after. I, never mind, let's get going. Follow me. I thought I'd never leave. At least now I have a clear shot to the courthouse. You gotta come with me. Look, you're in a lot of danger. What do you mean I'm in danger? No time to explain, Grand... Marty. Just promise me you'll stay at the police station until... Marty McFly. Just the guy we're looking for. Hey, fellas. Run! Get him! Artie? Uh -huh. I better pick up their trail before I start fading out again.
looks clear. All right, McFly. Let's go see the boss. Buddy, how's my favorite accountant doing? Oh, I've been better. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, McFly. Trixie, take a powder, doll. We got business to discuss. K.O., you boys play nice now. Mwah. Nice to see you again, Audie. You too, Miss Trotter. Yeah, yeah, we're all happy as clams. Now scram. <sighs> Are you guys stupid? What are you thinking, bringing this fish food to my doorstep? We just thought that was your first mistake. Thinking. Look at me. Do you ever catch me thinking? Huh? Uh... Don't answer that. Look, just drag him inside, find out what he told the DA, then get rid of him. I think we can handle that. Good. Now, if you don't mind, I've got an arsonist to snuff out. And will one of you slobs start hauling these crates in? We're on it, kid. So far, so good. Ha! Huh. I, I better get in there quick. Contents. One winged goddess. Oops. Hmm. Nice fit. Here goes nothing. Prince cue ball, stir the soup cue ball, clean out the blood stains cue ball. Shit, I'm not a gangster, I'm a freaking butler. Now which one of you guys goes in first? Jeez, for a gal with no arms, you sure is heavy. Whoops. Ow, do you mind? I'm trying to conduct a professional interrogation over here. Where should I put this? Just shove it behind the bar. I'll just shove you behind the bar. Mm. Come on, Artie. Jeez, how much chloroform did you put on that rag anyway? What? Because I'm having a hard time bringing Sleeping Beauty here around. Uh, uh, Let me see. Artie, we got a few questions about you and the D.A. D.A. Day D E D. You see what I'm working with here? Seems to be catching. Zane, wake up. Oh, sorry, boss. The stupid cold got me wiped out. <laughs> well, try to stay awake long enough to finish that poster, will ya? We got a club to open in a few days. And turn off that sign, would ya? I'm sleepyhead. Hey! Hey! What was that? There must be some wiring problems with the emergency button. You're already so out of it. Oh, hey guys, I don't feel so. Zane, wake up, you lazy bum! It must have been the cold. Cold my eye. He's been dipping into the inventory. The inventory. One more on down. Two to go.
Hi, hi. What the? I think we blew a fuse. Well, go up to the soup kitchen and get a new one. Why me? You'd rather hang around and talk to this guy, huh? Three days are here again. Yeah, I'll just get that fuse. For about 40 years. Is anyone Whoa. down there? Everything's spinning. Come on, Artie. Let's get out of here before these jerks get a chance to kill you. Wait a minute. They were gonna kill me? <sighs> Great. This isn't funny, guys. Perfect timing. Hang on, Grandpa. We've got a pickup to make. Need a lift? I thought you'd never ask. You'd never ask. Ah, what's he doing here? It's a long story. Ah, oh, son of a... And then I carried Artie to the DeLorean and came back to get you. That's it. So we can go home now, right? Not yet. We still have this loose end to tie up. No, don't tie me up again. He's coming around. Please be careful. You won't be safe in Hill Valley as long as Kit Tannen remains at large. Don't worry, I'm going far away from Hill Valley and I'm never coming back. No! no! He's got to hook up with Grandma. What's her name? Uh, it's Sylvia. You know a woman named Sylvia? No. Well, she knows you. We'll know you. It's vitally important that you two meet. Oh, I get it. You want me to be part of some undercover sting operation. No, possibly. Yeah. Are you G-Man? Uh-huh. Something like that. Sure, anything for Uncle Sam. I'll stay nearby and wait for this Sylvia. But in the meantime, I'll lay low. Good man. When can I expect to see you? Again? That was a close call. You think he'll be okay? You're not fainting out, are you? Besides, Arthur will be completely out of danger come August 25th. August 25th? That's the date Kit Tannen is finally put behind bars. How's that picture of your dad? Still there. Good. Let's get out of here before we accidentally elect Hoover to a second term. Well, everything looks okay. Are you sure? See? McFly residence. So, want to come in? Maybe hang out a while? I want my dad to see for himself that you're still around. I'd love to, Marty, but... You've got to go. I understand, Doc. You've got a life to lead, kids to raise and all that. No, I've got to go to the bank and stop that estate sale you told me about. Oh. Oh! You go find your pop. I'll be back within the hour. See you soon, Doc. Hey, anyone home? There's something wrong with my key. Please, not now. Tomorrow. Give me another day. It's Marty, Dad. Open up. Marty? No, that's impossible. Marty was run out of town. I've got a bad feeling about this. Run out of town? What are you talking about, Dad? Let me in. This is a trick. Go away. Leave us alone? Haven't we suffered enough? Mom. Mom, it's Marty, Mom. Open up. It sounds like Marty, but it must be a trick. Mom! Go away. 
Shame on you! How can I convince you? Tell me something only Marty would know. Ah, I've got a scar on my left knee. From what? Skateboarding down the courthouse steps when I was 12. That's right. Oh my lord, what are you waiting for, George? Let him in! Stupid locks. Marty! Oh my god, Dad. What, what happened to you? What do you think happened, butthead? Biff! I thought we told you to stay out of town, shrimp. Biff, whatever's going on, I'm sure we can handle it. Uh, reasonably. Who are they? Eh, like you don't know Cliff and Riff. What do you think we should do with them, baby bro? What we should have done years ago, big bro. I'm gonna enjoy this, McFly. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm trying to process here. What the hell did you do to my dad? Your dad's been in that wheelchair since before you were born, butthead. And you better hope he has a spare, cause you're gonna need one in like three seconds. Ooh. I got a question. Why are you guys so pissed at me? You don't remember? You've really lost it, McFly. Think back. The thing with the manure truck. Which one? Oof. Hey! And another thing. Huh. What are you guys doing here anyway? It's that time of the month. Time for Georgie to pay up. We usually take the payment in cash. But this month, we can take it out of your hide. Oof. Tell me. How long have you been coming down on my dad like this? Ever since that school dance, when Georgie laid Biff out in the parking lot. Ha <laughs> ha! Shut up, it's not funny. Someone messes with the Tannen family, the Tannen family never lets him forget about Oh! Here's what I still don't understand. What about my mom? I mean, how did she end up with my dad? Beats us. Guess she has a thing for losers. She could have had any one of us, but she went for old Gimpy McFly. And another thing. When did I get run out of town? Two years ago. Don't you remember? We made a deal that we'd go easier on your old man if you left. But now you're back, so the kid gloves can come off. Beth, you better leave before my dad calls the cops. The cops? We own the cops. The Tannen Gang's the fifth most dangerous crime family in California. We got connections all over the place. No way. You don't believe me? No! Bang! Ha ha! Check it out! To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. It's Don Valenti, godfather of the Sacramento mob. The third most dangerous crime family in California. Piece of cake. I never should have let that floozy talk me out of rubbing out your grandfather. Huh? Kid? No one in Hill Valley messes with the Tannen family. Marty, get in! This timeline's been compromised! No kidding! Somehow, something we did in 1931 allowed Kid Tannen to escape his date with justice. As a consequence, the Tannins have been unchecked in Hill Valley for over 50 years. Ah, jeez, they robbed the arcade? We've got to go back to the day Kid Tanner was supposed to be arrested. Figure out what went wrong and fix it. Otherwise, you could be forever stuck in a town owned by the Tannins. Not an option, Doc. Punch it.
Okay, Doc. Let's run through this again. Sometime tonight, Kid Tannen is supposed to be betrayed by his mole, the singer named Trixie Trotter. That hot babe I saw coming out of the speakeasy. Exactly. When she does, history says Tannen will be arrested by a rookie cop by the name of Danny Parker. Parker? Parker? Hey, do you think he's related to Jennifer Parker? My girlfriend? Could be. Heavy. In any event, somehow we've changed history so that neither of these events happens. Condemning your family to generations of abuse at the hands of a Tannen crime family. You need to go back into Tannen speakeasy, find out what's gone wrong, and get Kid Tannen arrested. No problem, Doc. Let me just put on my hat and I'm good to go. Is the mustache really necessary? It's essential. You can't let Kid know that you're the same troublemaker that foiled his attempt to kill me. Are you sure you can't come in with me? It's far too dangerous. You may be easy to disguise with your nondescript features, but ever since my daring escape from the police and the mob, my distinctive face has been plastered over every paper from here to Reno. Nondescript? I'll find a safe place to hunker down. That flop house ought to fit the bill. You can find me there if you need me. From the way you're dressed and your general aura of seediness, I can infer only one thing. You're heading for Tannen's speakeasy, am I right? Uh, yeah. Can't you tell me the way? Down. Straight down. The last stop before the Inferno. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to stop you, but I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. Me, 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 me. Your self-respect, but you should care. What in heaven's name? Oh, sorry, Miss Strickland. Just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily awry. Mr. Brown, why is there a dog in that vehicle? Why? Well, to advance the human condition, of course. Hello, Mike. Mike? Mr. Corleone, what are you doing in that getup? I'm going undercover. How exciting! You'll have to give me an exclusive sometime. Right now, I've got some souls to save. And you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment! You're not angry about the rocket drill? Water over the bridge. I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance. I'll be setting up. You won't believe what Einie and I have been up to. Famous last words. All right. Who sent you? Ulysses S. Grant. What did you bring me? Meat and potatoes. What's the word? Words are for wimps. Who died and made you boss? Boss Hog? What will you do if I let you inside? Sidle up to your boss? Where did you come from? From Russia. Uh, with love. Welcome to L Kids. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to once again present the hottest little number this side of the Rockies. And when I say my pleasure, I think you all know what I'm talking about, am I right? So let's have a big L kid welcome for the one, the only, Trixie Trotter. They say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense. But I don't care. Out of my way, kid. I got some sorrows to drown. I am my own superintendent. My star is on the ascendant. That's why I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Hey, you. Are you talking to me? Yeah, jerk. I saw you making eyes at my unit. Oh, lay off, Ernie. He's kind of cute. You think you can just waltz in here and make a play for another fella's girl? Give me a break. She's not... my era. Now you gotta insult her? I ought to paste you one right on the... Let him go, Ernie. Jeez, you're a mean drunk. Excuse me, are you Trixie Trotter? That's what it says on my dressing room door. At least, it would if I had a dressing room. I really like your voice. Thanks. You should hear me when I ain't so under the weather. You're sick? Oh yeah, sore throat. That's why I'm giving Cuball so many extended solos tonight. 
I kind of wondered about that. What's a nice guy like you doing with a guy like Tannen? Oh, kid ain't so bad. He just takes some- Hey, Toots, any chance you could sing that can-can number? The guys really love the way it shows off your, uh, assets. <sighs> Whatever you say, kid. <laughs> and quit lazing around. I ain't paying you to yak with the drunks. You ain't paying me at all, you bum. What were we talking about again? You were telling me what a great guy Kid is. <sighs> yeah, I guess he is a pretty crummy boyfriend. But until my insurance policy checks out, I guess I'm stuck with him. Insurance? Yeah. Look, I may not be the brightest bulb in the marquee, but even I know. You don't break up with a creep-like kid without something to keep him from going all crazy on you. What's this insurance policy all about? Are you kidding? There's only one person I trust with my secrets. But I ain't seen him in weeks. You don't mean... Artie McFly. Artie McFly. You know him? Not as well as I thought. Before he took a powder, Artie was tutoring me in all sorts of stuff. Etiquette, philosophy, accountant. He's a regular renaissance man. He even had one of those smart guy professor's pipes, see? Can I borrow this? Sure. I've been secretly working on my get-out-of-kid card for weeks now. But Artie's the only one I trust to check my work. You can't be too careful when you're dealing with a maniac like Kid, you know. Hey, if I arrange a meeting with Artie, could you use that insurance of yours? Use it? Heck, if what I'm sitting on pans out, I could send that bozo all the way to the big house. I'll see what I can do. Break a leg out there. Thanks. She's supposed to turn on Kid Tannen tonight? Okay, Doc, if you say hey, so. I know you, you're... Parker, Osford, Danny, Danny Parker, Hill Valley PD. Uh, have we met? Y you look familiar. Nah. Well, stranger, sit down and have a drink on me. I hear you've been having troubles. Troubles? Buddy, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Want to talk about them? Do, do I? Do I? Yeah, I do. It all started on uh, uh, June 14th. I was chasing down one of Tannen's boys when this, uh, this car, straight out of Buck Rogers, popped up out of nowhere and ran my car off the road. No. Then later, I, I lost track of a witness. The poor schlub hasn't been heard from since. That wasn't your fault. And then, to top it off, I somehow managed to lose custody of an 80-year-old arsonist. When not one, but... Two of those godforsaken space cars showed up and whisked him away. <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's what the chief said. Demoted me on the spot. My family sent me to a psych psychiatrist because they thought I was seeing things. And worst of all, my gal Betty left me because she thinks I'm a bad provider and a head case. <laughs> Betty, as in Jennifer's grandma Betty? <laughs> what? Listen, Danny, it's really important that you get back together with Betty. Ah, oh, that ship sailed. What the heck with her? I got a little secret that'll set me up with women twice as classy as Betty will ever be. So about that secret? Oh, yeah. My secret. Well, you're my pal, so I can tell you. But don't let it get out. I've been working for Tannen for over a month now. What? It's true. <laughs> All I gotta do is look the other way while evidence is getting destroyed or a truck full of gin is coming across the county line and ten make sure an extra bunch of bills makes their way into my pay envelope. Great deal. Oh, huh? no, not a great deal. What's the problem? People need to drink, right? As long as no one's getting hurt, why shouldn't Daniel J. Parker make a few bucks on the action? What about Artie McFly? Hasn't he been missing for two months? That's true, and all signs point to a tannin job. Oh god, I've made a horrible mistake! I thought if I could get my hands on some money, that Betty'd take me back! But when she finds out what I've done, she'll never even talk to me again. What have I done? <laughs> Come on, Danny, pull yourself together, it's not so bad. Not so bad? I'm a corrupt cop who's lost his only chance at true love. How's that not so bad? <laughs> Should you be drinking so much on duty? Probably not, but this joint ain't open when I'm off duty. See you later, Danny. 
I'll be here. I'm supposed to get this guy to arrest Kid Tannen tonight? Hey, bartender, what'll it be? What are you drawing? Another celebrity caricature. You drew those? Prohibition ain't gonna last forever, bub. I gotta have a skill I can fall back on. The shrew. Didn't burrow deep enough. Checkerboard Charlie. Removed from the board. I guess someone jumped him. Hmm, looks like someone's about to be added to Tannen's Wall of Fame. Think you could do a caricature of me? Sure. Presto! That really doesn't look like me. I didn't have much to work with. What can you tell me about Trixie? You trying to put the moves on kids, dame? No way. Good, because if you did, I'd probably be hanging you on the Wall of Honor. Know what I mean? So is your cold all better? My cold? Yeah, when I saw you a few hours ago, you were sneezing like crazy. Mister, I ain't had a cold in over two months. Oh yeah, right. Sorry. So about this, uh, portrait gallery of yours. What about it? What's it all about? Who are those guys? <clears throat> the caricatures hanging along the Wall of Honor commemorate those who are no longer with us on account of having ticked off one Irving Kid Tannen. They're the guys the kids killed? Well, of course not. They're just a bunch of guys that Kid didn't particularly like and that at a later date turned up dead. It's a, a what do you call it, a, a circumstantial coincidence. Yeah. Thanks for the talk. Next time, order a drink. This ain't no library, you know. Hey, nice suit. Where'd you get it? Costume shop at the mall. Uh, I, I had it custom made. Yeah? Quality material. Who are you? Where you from? The name's, uh, Michael Corleone. You don't know me. I, I come from a, a very different place. Come on, what's the dope? Spill it or I'll go easy, kid. From the cut of the suit, I'm thinking he might be with the Valenti gang. Is that so? Uh, yes? Prove it. You ain't leaving till you show me some boner fide. I've got a little something here that might convince you. Don't. Even. Blink. It's not a real gun. It's not a real gun, I swear. It's a gift from Don Valenti. See? To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. Looks like little Mikey Corleone here really is with the Sacramento boys. You got stones, Pee-wee. I like that. Have yourself a drink. On the house. Matches, put down your gun. You look like a moron. <sighs> hey, Artie. He's back. Hey, Doc. How's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house. How are your investigations going? I saw him. Who? My grandpa. On his streetcar for just a second. Doc, we gotta find him. Why? Trixie thinks she's got something that could put Kid away, but Artie's the only one who can tell her for sure. I guess he's kind of her tutor or something. Ah, so that's the connection. When your grandfather disappeared from Hill Valley for two months, the bond between him and Miss Trotter was severed eventually leading to a timeline in which Trixie lost her nerve to betray Tannen. Yeah? We've got to find your grandfather. Doc, Parker's in worse shape than we thought. We've screwed up his life so bad he's been dumped by Jennifer's future grandmother. Gah! I know. Marty, it's more important than ever that you get Officer Parker back on his destined path. If Jennifer never exists, then I'll never take you to 2015 to save your kids. Then old Biff will never- Paradox City, got it. Where'd you park the DeLorean? I hid it in a DeSoto lot. Nobody's buying cars these days, so it should be safe in there. Hey, who did burn down Tannen's original speakeasy anyway? I still don't know. I'd really like to find out before we go home. I never did get a straight answer about why he came back to 1931 in the first place. It's, uh, personal. When this is over, I'll tell you all about it. Can you explain all this? I'm confused. It's very simple. In the original timeline, Timeline A, the speakeasy arsonist was never caught creating one of Hill Valley's enduring historical mysteries. Okay. When I traveled back to 1931, I created Timeline B, in which I was misidentified as the arsonist and subsequently killed by Kid Tannen's goons. 
Einstein came with me, and somehow he ended up in the DeLorean when its failsafe mechanism triggered sending it back to 1986. Which is where I came in. Precisely. You traveled back to June 14, 1931, creating Timeline C, a world in which Carl Sagan wasn't rubbed out by Kid Tannen. But Arthur McFly was served for the subpoena. And shot by Kid Tannen's goons. Yes. So you jumped back in time six hours, creating Timeline D, saving your grandfather's life, but somehow preventing Kit Tannen from meeting his date with justice. Which is why the Tannens were so powerful when we jumped back to 86. Uh-huh. So now we've returned to August of 1931, creating Timeline E, in which, fingers crossed, we'll send Tannen to prison later. Sure. Good. One question. What? Can you explain all this? I'm confused. Okay, I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. Mike, you're just in time. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been... Uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. Almost as if he's been working with me for years. More like decades. How have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Really? Yes. That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science. What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but there'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. Aha! Got it! Got what? I'll show you! Ready to go, Einstein? Watch this! When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious cow flop. Oh, get him out of there! Not to worry. I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing. I'll go see if I can find something to help. Or someone. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never had the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter, those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the Expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the Expo. Doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower, and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. Okay, I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown. Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run... Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public safety. You know safety. what represents a clear and present danger to public safety? Your singing voice. 
There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars, of all the ridiculous juvenile you notions. You me, but just imagine. A world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. Well, I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. <gasps> Heine, how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well, fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now, how to get that rocket car back down? Hey, boy, take away for this. <laughs> Gotta love that nose. I've been laying low, officer, but I've got to go to the pictures once in a while. Hello, Arthur. Officer? I'll take it from here. But, but... We can talk at the Majestic, away from prying eyes. Yeah, Einstein, you done good. Welcome back, sir. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? I found Arthur. He's staying at the Majestic Arms. That flea bag? He's too classy for that. Yeah, well, anyway, you want to pop over there right now and talk to him about this evidence you got. I can't take more than a five minute break. Get him to come here. I'm not sure he'd find this place. Inviting. Then I guess he might say we're stuck at an impasse. Break a leg out there. Thanks. Hey, Danny. You know what? I used to be a good cop. And yeah, I've had a few bad breaks. Possibly even a psychotic one that caused me to imagine a disappearing space car. But I'm a good man. Yeah. And all I need to do to win Betty back is be the same good man I always was. And let the chips fall where they may. All right. So, now what? Now I wait. Wait for the moment to take down Kid Tannen, restore my good name, and win back the heart of Betty Lipinski. Hold that thought. I bet that moment is just around the corner. Hey, you know, uh, I don't think I ever caught your name. I never threw it, and now I'm not sure I should, what with you being an upstanding member of the police force again. Fair enough. I think I owe you a little anonymity. Just don't step out of line on my watch, you hear? Loud and clear, Officer Parker. See you soon, Danny. Take care, buddy. Emmett! No, no, no time for chit-chat. I've got a rocket car to recover. Emmett! You get down from there before you hurt yourself! Hurt myself? <laughs> You're far too cautious, Miss Strickland. Good news, Doc. Parker's ready to arrest Tannen, and it looks like I didn't go stag to the prom. Wonderful! What about Miss Trotter? I'm still working on her. Is Artie still here? He's in the bathroom. Hey, Artie, open up. You've got a gangster to bring down. Is it time for me to meet this Sylvia? No, it's time for you to meet Trixie. Trixie says she's got something that might be able to send Kid up the river, but that you're the only one she trusts to check it out. Me? What is she? Oh, I know what she's done. Clever. Care to let us in on the secret? Sorry, guys, but if Trixie's keeping it a secret, then so am I. That's all well and good, Mr. McFly, but if you and Trixie are going to collaborate on this evidence, we'll need to arrange a rendezvous. Well, Trixie's chained to kids speakeasy. So we'll have to bring Arthur to Trixie. Uh-uh. No way am I getting anywhere near that place again. I don't know how you talked me into this. Just stay back here in the shadows and don't come out until you see Trixie. You're sure I'll be safe here? Perfectly safe. We'd never make you take any unnecessary- <gasps> Sagan. Where's Kid? Don't worry. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? Guess who's waiting in the alley to talk with you? Huddy? The one and only. It wasn't easy to track him down. I had Cover to- Cover for me, cue ball. I'm taking a smoke break. Had a girl. Hey, you! Huh? Yeah, jerk. I saw you making eyes at my Eunice. Sorry, pal. I don't have time for a fight. 
Why, you? I'll never get to Carnegie Hall at this rate. All right, fella, I think you're done for the night. Hey, where do you think you're going? Me? Yeah, you. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing, I... Ah! Trixie? Break silver cue ball. Whatever you say, babe. What was that? Artie? <laughs> you missed a hell of a party, buddy. Kid, well, what happened? Oh, you're gonna love this. So, I'm hanging out in the club when all of a sudden I get an urge to drain the lizard, right? I come out into the alley, and who do I see? None other than that scrawny, subpoena-answering rat, Artie McFly. And get this! The little worms whisper in a way I'll conquistadorial-like with my Trixie! Oh, no. Naturally, I pull out Kid Jr. and prepare to put a couple bullets in McFly's head. Which causes Artie's nose to stop bleeding because he's a big wuss. And then... <laughs> and then... <laughs> what? Trixie literally gets down on the knees and begs me to let him live! <laughs> huh? Seriously, down on the knees crying and begging for McFly's life! So, uh, what did you do? What could I do? I fired two shots in the air and told Artie to take a hike. Ah, oh, that was merciful. Hey, I got plenty of mercy. Besides, now Trixie owes me big time. And Kid Tannen always collects on his debts. Always. Boss? Do you mind? I'm trying to have a good time here. I think you'll want to see this. Are you crazy? Bringing a stick of dynamite into my club? That's just it, boss. It's all over the place. I think our speakeasy arsonist is getting ready to strike again. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on Kid? You think you could draw a picture of this guy? Sure. Hey, that looks like that Artie McFly think. Hmm, I never noticed that before. Hey, uh, can you give him a hat like Artie wears? Voila! Nice job. Now, go tell them chumps at the New Yorker. Sorry about this, Dad. Uh, Trixie? Yeah? I talked to Kid. Oh? He told me about Artie. Oh. It was awesome of you to plead for his life. And it was uh, awesome of Kid to spare it. So you see why I gotta get rid of all the dirt I got on Kid. As long as he's loyal to me, I gotta stay loyal to him. I don't know how to tell you this, but I think you should check out the Wall of Fame. Why? What is it? Artie! I don't believe it! We had a deal! Artie was supposed to be... safe! I don't know what to say. Well, I do. Felony tax evasion. What? Before he died, Artie was teaching me about all sorts of stuff. Literature, history, accounting. And I made a big discovery while I was copying all of kids' books. This establishment ain't entirely on the up and up. Really? Oh, I knew about all the gangster stuff. That kind of thing you expect from tough guys like Kid. But when I found out he ain't been paying taxes on his speakeasy profits, well, cheating Uncle Sam is one step over the line. Once I turn this over to the police, they'll throw the book at him. This book? Hey, Papa! What happened to my louse of an ex-boyfriend? I don't know. Rats.
I told the chief we need a team of bloodhounds like they got over in Placerville. Yeah, but in the meantime... All right, everyone, party's over. Everyone out of the speakeasy. Speakeasy? You're mistaken, officer. This is an ice cream parlor. <laughs> nice try, you. Out! Corleone. Would the Valenti mob be willing to help, uh, defuse this little situation? I don't know. The Valenti mob doesn't like being associated with losers. Hey, we ain't begging here. Kid just thought JJ might like a piece of the action. Especially now that he's just caught the speakeasy arsonist. Wait, you mean... Doc? Doc? You ain't with the Valenti gang at all, are you? What do you know about the arsonist? Come on, you. Off to the station house. Kid's gonna get you, rat. He's gonna get all of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that. Thanks to Miss Trotter's evidence, the entire Hill Valley Police Force is out looking for Kid and his goons. You don't understand. We've got to find him now. He's captured a friend of mine. Who? Uh, never mind. Don't worry. We've got the entire town square sealed off. If Tannen's within a mile of here, we'll find him eventually. Uh, I don't think we have time for eventually. Irving, Kid, Tannen. Guess he dropped this on his way out. It's empty. Figures. Hey, get your nose over here. All right. I really don't think Tannen and Doc are with Herbert Hoover, Heine. Okay, okay, I'll check it out. A button. All right, Doc, here I come. Corleone! What are you doing here? Uh, never mind. Come here and help me get rid of this stinking arsonist. Edna? I caught a plant in dynamite while he was clearing out the soup kitchen. Guess Sagan was innocent after all. I was researching a story, you ignoramus! Tell it to St. Peter, sister. Hey, what's all this? Parker? Tannen, you're under arrest. Get him, Sacramento boy. I can't do that, kid. What? Oh, I get it. Why don't you let go of Miss Strickland and call it a night? Hey, look over there! Watch out! Give it up, Tannen. The alley's blocked off and so are the roads out of town. It's over. Over? Nothing is over until Kid Tannen says it's over. What should I do? Do you have a gun? Not a real one. Beats me. Moron. Moron this. Hey! Had a girl. Tannen! Make like a tree and die, rat! Bowling for ten. Hey, kid! Ha! That ain't a real gun! Oh, right. I forgot. I better just get rid of it then. Oh, crap. <coughs> He's getting away! Oh no! Yes! No! There! Good as new! Oh look, Tannen! The judge's son! All right, Parker! I want a getaway car and a clear road to Nevada, or the brown kid gets it! Doc! Marty! Doc? Yes! I'm talking to you through the radio apparatus my younger self has installed in the rocket car. What's going on up there? It's not good, Doc. Trixie and Parker did their part, but now Kid's holding you hostage. Great Scott! No kidding. Try to get Kid in the car. Once he's inside, give me a signal, and I'll do the rest. How am I... You! Emmett! You're the cause of all of this, ain't you? Doc, hit it!
Someone call Satan! Irving Tannen, I'm placing you under arrest for kidnapping, attempted murder, tax evasion, and smelling like a piece of crap. Tax evasion? Haven't you heard? The feds are practically drooling over Trixie's books. Trixie? That's what you get for killing Artie, you bastard! What? I didn't... Trixie? Artie? All right, Grandpa. My poor car. I believe I owe you an apology, Mr. Brown. Thanks to your ridiculous contraption, Hill Valley's most notorious criminal is finally headed to prison. No apologies necessary, Miss Strickland. My rocket car may have accidentally saved the day, but only because it's a completely out-of-control failure. I need a new idea. If you're willing to listen, I might have a few suggestions. But first, I think we should take in a movie. I'm all yours, Mr. Brown. I think you'll like it. It's all about a brilliant scientist with an overabundance of hubris. Whew. Come on, Einie. Let's go find Doc. Oh. Thanks for letting me fly the DeLorean, Doc. This thing's a blast. I'm absolutely sure that everything's back to normal. Totally. Kids going to jail, Emmett's going to see Frankenstein, and there's no such thing as a tanning crime family in 1986. <laughs> and we remembered Einstein this time, too. Hill Valley crime rate at all time low. Hmm. Well, except for Grandpa necking with Trixie, I think we're ready to go back to 1986. Do you feel yourself fading out of existence? No. Then as long as your father's still born in seven years, I say, let your grandfather sow his oats. Sowing oats? Is that what's going on with you and Edna? What are you talking about? Emmett and Edna, they're gonna go see Frankenstein together. That's... odd. Great Scott! What? Where'd you go, Doc? Martin McFly, age 18. Okay, Doc, let's see what kind of nightmare alternate timeline I've landed in this time. Father George, 